Uh, we're gonna switch back to English now because uh, as I was saying in the introduction in Spanish we are talking about a topic that is always very interesting to me which is education and cars and for that we have Diane Fitzgerald who has been named uh, the National Director of the Hagari Education Program at the America's Cars Museum. How are you Diane? I'm fine Javier, how are you? Thanks for having me on today. No, thank you uh, very much and again uh, I know it's a new position for you, you were just uh, named to it uh, just a couple of weeks ago, right? Yes, yes. September 1st was uh, my first day as National Director of Haggard Education Program at America's Car Museum, and I'm thrilled about it. Yeah, it sounds, I mean, just the, the idea, I mean, this is something uh, that is really, really exciting. Uh, once I received the information a couple of weeks ago, I was immediately jumped into it because it's something that, uh, that I think it's like an art that is being lost, like restoring old cars. Yes. Yeah, the focus is on... Um, Well, actually, let me tell you what my job is, and then I'll um, sure. tell you about the end receivers. I have two very important jobs. I have to raise money, and then I give it away. And it's not so much Diane in a in an isolation raising money and giving it away. It's the decision of the board of directors of the Haggerty Education Program who decide which of the grant applications we give money to. But... Um, But we raise money to give it away to established programs that are teaching automobile restoration and preservation that lead to careers. So this isn't so much the kind of um, education program or where we're funding education programs of, you know, paying for bus trips to the museum. Yeah. That's, that's another part of the museum doing that. This is truly... Um, impacting the economy, I think, eventually. That's how I see this. It's going to impact the economy. That's how big I'm thinking of this. Um, and, and, also, and also, I guess, impacting the, the life of the people who receive this great opportunity, no? Because, I mean, it's something, as we were saying, it's like a, a, an art, almost, that it's, it's uh, fading away in some cases, I think. I don't know. And, uh, oh, absolutely. Whoever receives this opportunity is going to, as you said, is going to have like a career for life. Exactly. And and there are a couple of different ways of looking at it. So now let's talk about the people who receive grants. So I've raised money. We've raised money. You know, it's a group effort. It's a collaboration. We raise money, raise money, raise money. And now we're giving it away. And the people that we're, that we're impacting are typically students that are involved in these programs. So we give the programs money. We don't give the students directly money. Okay. Although we're evolving into a new aspect of uh, apprenticeships, which I'll tell you that in a second. Sure. So there are a couple of uh, schools, of course, in the, um, in the country. McPherson College in Kansas comes to mind first. They are the first a four-year degree program in automobile restoration wow. in the United States, first and only. And then there are you know, many wonderful uh, community colleges and vocational schools like uh, Clover Park Te Technical College having automobile restoration. So we fund those programs, and then they create scholarships for individuals, or they buy equipment, or, you know, that would impact a lot of people and have a long life as opposed to, you know, again, um, paying for bus trips to the museum. So this is hardcore skill development for career and career building, and it's really quite profound, I think. Yeah, absolutely. The other side of it... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. The other side is um, our new apprenticeship program where we're identifying master craftsmen and women who are the restorers, today's restorers. And in order to um, have tomorrow's restorers fully trained, right, not so much just all the mechanical, but the, but the art of it, just like you were saying a minute ago, there's an art to this. Yeah. And the finesse that you need, uh, that can't be taught, except when you're standing side by side, a master craftsman as an apprentice, you know, like back in the old days. Oh, Europe, absolutely, yeah. 
because craftsmen apprentices. Yeah, because classic cars actually were made pretty much by hand. Nowadays, there's robots and there's like a lot of technology that help uh, car manufacturers uh, produce the cars. But like the cars from the past really need a lot of like hand uh, skill. I mean, like like really you'd be touching and like doing things with your hands, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, even though it was the Industrial Revolution that enabled the cars to be manufactured at affordable prices for people like us to buy them, um, they, you know, there were no computers the way the cars are built as computers now. And the tooling and the um, understanding of how the motors work, so there's a whole engineering piece to this, as well as the art, art piece with working with Master Craftsman. So in the cases of the uh, apprentices working with Master Craft and what we will do and what we've done once uh, so far, we've just launched our apprentice program in um, August, well, no, actually September is to um, give apprenticeship money to the Master Craftsman's business who will then pay the apprentice that we identify. So it'll almost be like a matchmaking okay. situation. Identifying the master craftsman and then back to these programs like McPherson and Clover Park and various other vocational schools and community colleges, um, identifying or promoting the fact that we're doing this so that they can identify themselves and fitting the right apprentice with the right master craftsman. And I'm pretty excited about that because that um, is really... Uh, a formidable nod to the heritage of cars and to the meaningfulness of the master craftsman's contribution to the hobby, which I am now calling from hobby to heritage. Yeah. Because I really think, back to the economic piece of this, I really believe that what we're doing is creating a sub-industry of the automotive industry called automotive heritage. And I think that if I do my job well, um, we will be able to create meaningful momentum to have this industry, not just be a hobby. Absolutely. So, you know, how, and we, you know, hobbies are nice and they, uh, you know, keep us sane, I guess, in the day-to-day -day world of, of all of our obligations and responsibilities. A hobby is kind of a safe haven for us. But uh, hobby, I, the word hobby, you, you know, you think about something that's not, necessary. It's not necessarily a luxury, but it's certainly more frivolous than urgent. And what I am trying to do with the help of help and support of the board of directors and the people that I collaborate with is to convert that thinking from hobby to heritage. And I think we're, you know, it's kind of a baby and easy job because we're, we're kind of already there. People who collect cars have a passion for it, and for them to recognize and kind of change their thinking a little bit, uh, that, wow, you know what, this isn't really a hobby. This yeah. It's, it's, it's it, and it's preserving history, which is like the other like uh, really important thing. So Diane, can you let us know? Uh, so the the four year program, where does that take place? Is at the actual museum, or where where, where is this gonna be going on? The, the four year degree program uh, is at a college in Kansas. It's the only college that has a four year degree program in automotive restoration, and that's called McPherson College in Kansas City, Kansas. Okay. And, um, you know, we'll be, hopefully there'll be more of those with, with our help. There'll be more schools uh, that give degrees, you know, an associate's degree at a community college, certification, accreditation, and I believe that there will be more opportunities like what's at McPherson um, over time, and, and hopefully over a short period of time, maybe three or four years. Yeah. But McPherson is just the example that I give. You know, if any of your listeners know of Master Craftsman or know of established education programs, um, you know, they might give me an email or, or shoot off an email uh, to you, and then you could get me that information. That would be fantastic. Getting, yeah. You know, getting really into the grass. Yeah, be, besides the broadcast, we're going to post all the links and information from the museum, from the foundation and all that. Uh, so we're talking to with Diane Fitzgerald. She, she's been named uh, 
National Director of the Haggerty Education Program at the American Sky Museum, and again, uh, a fabulous program uh, to like revive uh, something uh, from the past and then preserve it for eternity, hopefully. So, Diane, uh, a couple of more things. Um, the the pro the the program is sponsored by Haggerty, which is the world's leading insurance provider for classic vehicles, right? Um, yes, but let me clarify that with a little bit more information. Um, the program uh, is named the Haggerty Education Program at America's Car Museum because, like other, you know, like you name stadiums, U.S. Cellular and yeah. whatever other stadiums, they are the people who have given. Um, the largest amount of sponsorship funding to this program. Okay. And so they have the naming rights to that. And um, other uh, entities, other corporations, of course, donate to the Haggerty Education Program. And I'm hoping that more over time, as soon as, you know, we get the word out a little bit further, hopefully with the reach of your listeners, to corporations, individuals, small businesses, who would contribute to this so that we can, um, you know, have enough money to continue perpetual funding is what my goal is. Excellent. Well, thank you, uh, Diane. Unfortunately, I mean, it's a fascinating conversation. We're running out of time in this segment, but we're, again, we're going to publish all the links and information and uh, we'll be in touch and hopefully uh, we can, like, follow up with, like, some uh, good announcements about uh, what you are doing, okay? Perfect. Great. Thank you so much for having me on today. I appreciate it, Javier. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.